Welcome back to another edition of The Wizard Shop. And the really cool thing is that with this episode, this is one year anniversary. This is one full year of the Car Wizard channel. I'm really thankful to you guys for supporting and helping out and all the cool comments and everything. And we've got many more, many more videos coming for the next year. So again, thanks for all your support and I look forward to another year. Look at this beautiful, beautiful car. This is a 69 Stingray, and we're getting ready to go over it, check it over, and talk about Corvettes. This is a really, really cool car. It's once in a while that I get a cool classic like this, and it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. I've mentioned to you before, to you guys, about a guy in Wichita that sells these kind of cars. It's Euro-Asian on North Broadway in Wichita. The guy, his name's Bob, that owns it. If you guys are in the South Central Kansas, or even in the state of Kansas, and you're looking for cool cars, awesome cars, you need to check out Euro-Asian Auto Inc. online. Let's talk a little bit about Corvettes first before we delve into the car. A little bit of, a little bit of history on it. The very first Corvette that came out was 1953, and it had an inline six. No V8s, there wasn't V8s, there wasn't anything going on with that. It was a 235 blue flame inline six. This was the first generation Corvette, so therefore this is where we're gonna start with C1. The C1 ran from 1953 to 1962. C2 went from 1963 to 67. C3, 1968 to 1982. C4, 1984 to 1996. C5, 1997 to 2004. C6, 2005 to 2013. C7, 2014 to 2019. And the one they just came out with, the C8, which is the, the mid-engine Corvette that's really, really creating sparks all over the internet. It's a 2020 Corvette, that's the C8. And like I said, these, the powertrain, as far as powertrain goes up to this car, they originally came out with the inline six, was the Blue Flame 235. Not a whole lot of power, but for what for a lightweight fiberglass car, it did pretty good. 1955 was the beginning of the small block Chevy. That's when they came out with the 265 V8 in the Corvette. This would be in the C1 Corvette. That is the father of the small block Chevy all the way up till now. And you can see my Corvette back there, which is a C4. It's an 84 Crossfire. It also has a small block Chevrolet. Now, back to this beautiful car. This is a 69 Stingray. There was a few engine options in this year. This one happens to have the base model, 300 horsepower, 350 small block Chevy. In 1969, when this car was made, there was actually a labor strike that caused the 69 model year to last abnormally long. So long, in fact, that the 1970s model, the 1970 model year, suffered greatly in sales for the 70 model year because of the labor strike that caused all that grief. The C3 is actually modeled or patterned off of the Mako Shark 2 concept car. This is where this whole shape comes from. In 1969, you also had, you had several different options you could have ordered on them. One of them being side exhaust or rear exhaust. Only in this year could you get that option between the two different exhausts. Before or after this year, you got what you got and you just took it. But in this year, you had a choice, side or rear exhaust. You also had the option of the all-aluminum ZL1 big block Chevy in this, which they quoted to be 430 horsepower. But there was reports there was actually 560 horsepower coming out of that motor. And it was hitting the quarter mile at 10.89. It's very, very fast. And like I said, this one has the base 300 horsepower, 350. I'm going to pop the hood. We'll take a quick look around inside the engine bay. Then we're going to put this thing on the lift and take a look underneath and see what it looks like. If there's any rust or any leaks or anything going on like that. And as you can see, this one's mostly stuck. This has a few little modifications like valve, Mickey Thompson valve covers. And I think that'd be... I don't know if this is aftermarket or not. The sticker advertises it being, it says 370 horse, but that's not what this would have come with. It would have been a 300 horse. It's got headers and different things on it. It's been some modifications done to this motor. 
but it looks fairly clean under here. There's no blast of oil or anything looking nasty under here. It's got a flex fan on it. Looks like it's been taken pretty good care of. Looks like a fairly new master cylinder with this cap plating on here. You can see the windshield wiper vacuum servo there. There and really not a whole lot to to see under here. They're pretty simple back then. Let's get this thing on the lift and see what we find. Luckily on this vehicle, this is still the years of having a steel frame underneath. Made it a lot easier to lift. There's no guesswork, just put it on the frame. <clears throat> Let's start up here and just kind of see what we got going on here. Looks like some fairly new rotors, some new pads. It's got some Delco shocks on it. I don't know if those are new or not, but they look fairly new. New rotors and pads. I don't see any radiator leaks. Looks like there's a little bit of a leak going on here. Probably a valve cover gasket's leaking up there, not a big deal. Got big full length headers on it, very nice. Very nice. Yep, I can see the valve cover gaskets are leaking up there. It'll need new cork gaskets. That's what all this is from as well. And this is valve cover gasket leak as well. It's dripping all down the side and onto this thing. Doesn't have power steering. So I guess you don't need it when it's this light. There's the four speed transmission. There's a tiny bit of seepage on it, but nothing to be expected from this age of a vehicle. And not unexpected. There's a drive shaft. Nice and tight. And there's the differential. It's got, just like my Corvette over there, it has these, I guess you call them transverse leaf springs. One big leaf spring does both sides. Pretty neat. Looks like it's got new pads and rotors back here. Here's the axle shafts. It's nice and tight. Let's check this one. Nice and tight. I don't really see anything, anything else huge on here. So for its age, it's really in pretty good shape. Amazingly in pretty good shape. The tires, they look all right, but as far as, let me see if I can find a date code on them. I don't see a date code on them, but they don't, I mean, they don't look bad. Got some fancy wheels on it. Anson wheels. I don't know that I've ever heard of that. Very interesting. Looks like somebody at some point has put a better ground on. And the frame, something to check on these is the frame. It has normal surface rust, but there's nothing cancerous or bad or... Really, it's in pretty good shape for its age. We don't live in the rust belt here, so you can tell this car was taken pretty good care of. It's really pretty nice. Well, let's, let's put this car down on the, back on the ground. Okay, let's take a look at the interior here. How they did it back in the old days. It's classic, it's clean, black. It's got a lot of little features in it, like it tells you if you've got a bulb out. This, I think these are like fiber optic style, a style setup. There's your climate control right there by your shifter. 
And just like my 84, you can't get the key out without putting it in reverse first. There's your wiper switch, there's your gauges, an old AM radio, nice seats. And there's turn locks. You turn them. That's pretty interesting. Here's the old lap belt. The good old days. Look at all that metal, 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 metal. No plastics. And then really what's amazing here is the dash is not cracked. It has some Velcro on it, like maybe someone had a, uh, a radar detector or something up there at some point, but very, very nice. Well, the interior on this car is really held up very well. I actually read an article not too long ago that people are keeping their cars longer and they're lasting a little bit longer, but the interiors aren't holding up. And I think a lot of manufacturers have really cheapened out on the interiors with the plas thin plastics and painting things or putting coatings on the dash to make it look good and it just doesn't last, it peels off. But this one really has stood the test of time. I, I guess this is back when they built things to last and it has. It has lasted pretty well. The paint has some little flaws in it for the age. It's got little cracks in the paint here and there. But that wouldn't scare me from buying one of these because it's, it's expected with the age of the car to have some issues here or there. But overall it is not in bad shape. You can't say this car is in bad shape. It's in really pretty good shape. Look at that beautiful tail end with the, the tail lights. Quintessential Corvette. Well, thanks for following along. I thought you guys would really enjoy to take a look at a 69 Stingray up close and personal and check out the bottom end, check out the motor, and really it's a beautiful car. I wanted to thank you guys again, especially my Amazon affiliates page. You guys have been purchasing a lot of tools and things, and I hope they help you guys out, save you some trouble. Uh, and every time you guys purchase something, we get a little small percentage of it, and I really do appreciate that. And again, I appreciate the, the first year of the Car Wizards YouTube channel. The channel has really grown really fast. If you like the channel, tell your friends about it. Thanks for watching. We've got many more cool wizard videos to come.